Hi, in this video what I want to do is talk a little bit about some of the challenges in applying relative valuation. Relative valuation can be a good framework for coming up with an approximate value of the company, but we do have to be careful and recognize that it does have some limitations. So one of the limitations that we can see, and this is from an example that I used in a previous video, is that the average that we're looking at may be a little misleading. So if you look, for example, at my PE multiple, one of the things that you can see is that it's gone from 24.5, 26.8, 29.3, 32.6. So my average during that time period is 28.3. But what I might be seeing here is that the market is finding some reason why my PE multiple should be higher now than it has been historically. And no, this is not really related to the industry because if we look at the industry PE, it's bounced around, it's gone up a little, down a little, and it's not that different than it was in previous years. So this is gonna cause two distortions. One, my average that I'm using to figure out what the fair PE should be down here in this historical approach, and again, in the comparative approach, is going to be a little misleading. It's probably going to result in me understating the value of the stock. The stock price should probably be a little bit higher than I'm estimating. And that is because the actual PE that should be applied to my firm is probably higher and my relative PE ratio should also be a little bit higher. I can see here that price to books got that same issue going on my industry p or my industry price to book multiple has actually declined slightly but mostly it's just bounced around flat while my firm's price to book has gone up and the ev to ebitda multiple has gone up for my firm and is flat for the industry so all of these estimates that i'm coming up with this 85 to 96 price target is probably a little too low that's one of the things i have to be careful about Flip side is maybe my PE multiple or price book multiple or EV to EBITDA multiple has been going down during this time period instead of up. And that's going to cause me to overstate the value using these calculations. Another problem that can come up, and this is especially going to be true in the price to book multiple, is one trend we've been seeing over the markets over the last several years is more and more companies are accompanying their dividend policy with stock buybacks. And as companies purchase shares of stock, what they're actually doing is lowering their book value. And what this is doing in some cases is causing companies to have negative book values. So if you look at companies like, for example, McDonald's or Brinker International, and I'm talking right now during the fall of 2019, so that may not be true at the time you watch this, but in the fall of 2019, both of those companies have negative book values. Doesn't mean that the company is bankrupt or doesn't have any value. Just means that the accounting approach of buying back shares of treasury stock is resulting in the, in the company having a negative book value on their balance sheet, which means their price to book is going to be meaningless. So you can't use that multiple in order to value the stock. Another thing that happens from time to time is companies have very cyclical earnings, which causes their earnings to be artificially high during periods of good times and artificially low during periods of bad times. And that's going to cause these PE multiples and EV to EBITDA multiples to bounce around quite a bit. So there may be a very good reason why our firm right now should have a higher PE multiple than it has historically are a lower PE multiple than it has historically. Same for EV to EBITDA. What if our company doesn't have earnings? Then the PE multiple is not gonna be useful at all and we might have to go to something like price to sales. Problem with price to sales is companies need to generate profits or specifically cash flows in order to be valuable. And so just having sales is not going to lead to value. We need to be generating some positive cash flows from those sales. It doesn't have to be today, but it's something that the company is going to have to grow to having positive margins. 
And so if our company has negative net income, negative earnings per share, then the PE multiple is not going to be a meaningful predictor. What this means is that PE multiples, price book multiples, enterprise valued EBITDA multiples, all are tools that can help us figure out the fair value for a company, but we have to be very, very careful in applying them. If we're not, we can come up with a classic garbage in, garbage out output for the stock price. One of the things that I think is a real challenge in finance is what I refer to as false precision. We get very precise answers. So for example, here you see our value is $90.56. Here our value is $85.31. Based on the numbers we put into our formulas, we get precise outputs, but they are precisely wrong. This is not telling us the value is $90.56. Instead, it's saying the value should be, assuming this model is legitimate, somewhere in the ballpark of $90. But there's going to be quite a bit of error because we don't have the proper PE multiple. We know what it has been historically. That doesn't mean that it is what it should be today. And if the PE multiple should be different, the value is going to be different. Same true for price to book, enterprise value to EBITDA, price to cash flow, or any other multiple that we might be using. The less reliable our inputs are, the less meaningful the outputs are. So we have to be careful and step back from our numbers and realize that these are approximations. They're approximations that are based on how valuable our inputs are. And if we don't have confidence in our inputs, can't have confidence in what's coming out of these models. And that's going to be true with any stock valuation model. They're going to provide a guideline. They're not going to provide the answer and tell us what the stock is worth. Thank you.